where we have seen some pretty crazy 50-50 off the drop, but again, taking a step back now, looking at a team like Pixie and Giannis landing at Redline Rig, and currently just fixated exclusively on trying to maintain the most optimal loop path possible. You know, what I'm really excited about, or, or what I'm happy about watching play out today is that all the rumors were true. Everyone who said, I'm landing on this team, I'm taking that fight, they meant it. And they're Ooh. showing up just like Power Alex and Worthy here, who take down Murstash for his second game now, back to back. And Malabuka left in the courtyard here to run for himself. Worthy doesn't want to peek because he's got low HP, but so does Malabuka. Alex says, screw it, I'm going for it. Finds one tag, can he get the second? Of course, he can. And he secures the dub there. Back to back now on the drop. Better late than never after all. And as far as the Power Boys are concerned, Alex and Worthy have finally woken up when they needed to most MDF because first few matches of the day, certainly not going their way. But to close out here, winning it out over the likes of Malibuka and Mustache of all teams, that's a huge confidence swing. Very, very well played there, but hold up. I'm holding my breath for a second as Kovacs and Huddy have almost not learned any lessons as far as respecting Scroll and Sky are concerned. It seems like when they get the drop and they have the high ground, they are all action and no fear here. Last game, they survived the drop. They made something good out of it. Once again, making it into the end game. It's very clear that if Huddy and Kovacs perform the same tomorrow, they're going to be up inside that top 10 with a very hefty, hefty chunk of money, given that there is $2 million plus dollars of prizing available here in the tournament. So, so much more to play for than just the bragging rights, of course. Sixth place now for Kovacs and Huddy as we get the standings update. And look, the game that Sky and Scroll survived, though, they made something great out of it, too. So these are clearly two very good teams. Without a doubt, more on that later on though, because right now it's all about clicks and Benno. They have full on trap. Damon resigns inside of the tunnel now. Here next to Sandy steps, resigns, trying to do it again, but Benno is relentless with the pressure. Clicks on the other hand, needs way too much damage. That could be so problematic. Damon resigns. They're gonna manage to escape because Clicks has to fall back. There is no other option. They cannot afford to fall here. They are still maintaining a position within the top 10, but the fact that they've managed to fluctuate outside of top five, that's a position that can be really difficult to come back from, especially when you remember tomorrow's one and a half times point multiplier. Yeah, very scary now as tags come in from the distance as well here. Damo and the resigns are starting to surge with confidence as they push off clicks clearly, but Vino is there to defend. Now, Resigns, looking back, not sure if there's a team potentially sneaking up behind them. He'd be right to assume so, so can't let his guard down just yet. There is danger looking everywhere, and it looks like it's about to go down there for Damo and Resigns at the hill, but give it a second here. The other issue, though, that Venno and Clicks have now encountered, though, is that this exchange is drawn out for far too long. The launch pad positioning that Venno and Clicks like to try and set up for, for height elevation, try and look for some surge tags, it's going to be cut short. It's going to be stretched out for far too long. And other teams are now having the opportunity to make their approach instead. Peterbot Poyo already trying to converge onto this location. Forecast Tower in sight as well, potentially. But Aspect, Kazi, they've got to be careful. Lingering around Snooty Station, they don't want to get caught off guard. And sure enough, Peterbot, Poyo, it's all about making it to the launch pad hill. They're on the high ground right now. If they just peek over, they'll see that there's a lot of opportunity below them starting to develop, but Peterbot's got his attention on the far eastern team here. Glances over in Vino's direction, takes some tags, doesn't quite find them just yet. It's Giras and Sherry, though, who's building up the high base here. There are roughly six teams in this area, all with sight lines on Vino and Clicks. And it comes as no surprise, considering that it's the forecast tower that everybody was hoping to potentially get their paws on, but instead, We'll have to sit back and wait to see what happens next here as Clicks, Benno, again, they were just prevented from getting optimal positioning.
to set up for the Forecast Tower and launch bad plays, and now they've lost that position entirely to the likes of Peterbot and Poyo, and they know it as well. So at this stage, the only option left is for Clix and Venno to confirm these two eliminations now onto Demo and Resigns. Yeah, they're starting to push here pretty aggressively. Clicks doing much better job now as he side by side his teammate Vino. The opponents, Damo on the run now, built out to the side there. Clicks still curious to the fact that he owns some of the territory here. That's going to be a small victory for them in the time being. Then Up and over they go. This is where they had initially trapped Resigns and Damo, but at the same time, Damo managing to sneak around out back, but it, it's only because of the fact that Giras, Sherry, they have moved in to the vicinity, and now Venno clicks, fully aware of the fact that there is just too many numbers surrounding them. It's too close for comfort. They've got to find another way to escape, and the other thing that could potentially be threatened at this point for clicks and Venno is the vending machine. It's gonna be I don't want to say impossible for them to make their way to those resources, but at the same time, how do you break through all these duos already surrounding you? Yeah, and again, more points lost as well. It's it's not just, of course, the game starting to slow down for them. It's the points that they're not accruing because Giras and Sherry have effectively taken those eliminations now. Even Aspect and Kaz are just off in the distance. They're listening to what's happening. Jumping on over to... Other very familiar teams here, XS Ritual, Re as well, kind of inside the Doom stat, but you have Muds here waiting, almost combed up, slips out the side there. He's very fast. He's not going to make it easy by any means. Out the wall he goes, but it's a 2v1. What can you do? Re takes him down without a sweat. I know it's really interesting to actually see Re and Ritual clashing this early on with Epic Well and Muzz. A passing comment that Re made in the player room last night was, you know, we missed out on a cash cup. Most recent one, Epic Well and Muzz, they were able to get Mysterio uncontested and all the little goodies that he has to offer. And so, have to wonder now, you, you get a taste of that kind of power and you want to keep going back for it. So Epic Well and Muzz, that might be a fight that they find themselves caught up in for more than just today. Yeah, that makes sense too, right? You get that false sense of security, like, oh, cash cup win, great. Let's well, it was uncontested, right? Do so that again. You're feeling good. And then, Reed and Ritual, though, there to remind them, no, 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 this is still our territory. But again, it could be a clash of the Titans for sure. Well, Chicho and Trulux have continued to show us that they have what it takes to find their way up the standings here. They've really fought their way up the rankings almost unprecedentedly. No one saw it coming here. But when they make it into the end game, they, they're just an unstoppable force. You don't really know what to expect from them. You'll find them in the mid ground, sometimes on the height. And all of a sudden now, they are just there. Trulux and Chicho just have a way of kind of just going unexamined, essentially. Like, it almost seems like they have a very seamless transition from their early to mid to late game. And a big part of the reason for that is that they are just a team that is notorious. They go for the surge bases. They go for the reliable surge tank damage as well. They are just excellent at bottlenecking teams into a certain flow on the map. Because wherever they surge base at, you know it's going to be an optimal position that's going to prevent everyone else from participating. And we did notice that they have the storm information as well, just given to us from that update there. So they know exactly where they need to be, where the next zones are going to be moving towards Vico, pushing in on Virgo. Not looking to let them have this for free, but his armored wall there. And oh, he's serious about it. You know, he's serious and he's willing to break this one down. Might be here for a minute. Depends. Imagine another one goes up right after the fact. And sure enough, just in case you thought they were done, Vico and Flixie, they're going to be pickaxing for a hot minute to get into this bunker. Virgo and Shadow know that they are functioning with limited time here. And every second just means 
one more opportunity for Shadow and Virgo to continue to strip the weapon bunker of all its valuable resources, but this is about to be an all-out brawl here for Pico and Flixie. Not looking good for Flixie. Shadow and Virgo were ready for the fight there. And another armored wall comes down, so those armored walls are instantaneously put at maximum HP. They clearly have three or four X <laughs> the health of a metal wall, so it's a good way to slow a team down, especially the second place one, but let your guard down, and now look. Team is flying in very, very fast here. We'll get their names shortly. Flixie and Vico is in a world of trouble here, potentially now. I'd say even they're lucky that it seems as though Virgo and Shadow were just out of audio range to hear those shields getting cracked. Well, they gotta, they gotta get past their own armored wall, <laughs> yeah, right? It's, it's a two-way street there. It is a two-way street for sure, but at the same time, I, I definitely respect the decision there from Vico and Flixie because that fight back that we saw from Shadow and Virgo defending their position inside of the bunker, despite the fact that it was Vico and Flexi, they did not care in the slightest. And, and I love that out of Shadow and Virgo because they're a team that's coming in here. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily have many expectations for them, but the confidence that they compose themselves with, even on socials, they are here to try and actually shock the world. Yeah, they really have matured as players, but Look at this, Vico and Flixie now find Jerome and Zagu above them. You know, you take us back to the Invitational window where Zagu really put up a performance and won over the hearts of uh, the NA region and honestly the global fan base of Fortnite. Bring him here, he's got a lot of work to do coming into tomorrow. Alongside Shadome there, but the VODs will tell the story. The practice will show. Vico and Flixie's preparation clearly coming out in spades here, as is Peterbot and Boyos, and we all know they're guided by the same person. But at the same time, you have such a strong day one performance. You gotta be careful that you don't let that confidence transition into overconfidence. And Vico and Flixie, I don't wanna call it an overinvestment just yet, but they got a whole lot of nothing after investing a decent bit. I mean, they were practically max mats before leaving that weapon bunker position. They were trying to see if they could wait out Shadow and Virgo, but those two were not willing to budge in the slightest. And now Vico, Flixie, they didn't have any other options but to leave in a totally separate direction after acquiring nothing out of it as well. I mean, I get it. You're feeling good, especially after the performance they've had today, but moments like that could be disastrous in day two. Yeah, definitely. And like you mentioned, it is, it's surely confidence, right? Pushing in like that, but give it a minute here. Acorn and Cold now pushing Zagu, or sorry, Rise and Yuma actually. Rise and Yuma, who started off so hot today, have just dropped their mid games for three games in a row now. And it is really weighing in on the standings. They're gonna have to hit the drawing board big time now as they have went from second place all the way down to 14th now. And that just shows you how good of a couple of games they did have, given that they're still inside a very respectable position on the standing. So everyone who falls now, everyone you see getting dropped here, that's gonna be the end of their day once. Poor Bolts, man. He's just trying to break through the armored walls that Kramsu and Clone keep throwing his way. And not only that, but he's gotta make sure that he keeps tabs on the team that's also faced up on a hill behind him. Bolts, Price. they're not trying to get greedy by any means here. Pixie and Janice are definitely posing enough of a threat that they are trying to be tactical in the approach here. They just want the immediate fight up against Gramsu and Clone instead, but Gramsu and Clone, at least for the time being, they've got the health advantage. Flixie, though, finds himself below the surge. It's all making sense now as to why they realize they have to push a team. Going and Quanti at the railways are going to be meeting the team that is the king of the railways at this point. And this is the second time now, right? Almost deja vu here. But this time, Flixie and Vico need the damage and the Elims to go with it. Flixie gets shot first. Go and puts up a great tag there. But the edit comes through and Vico is down at the bottom to catch him there. Fox running out though here. Can they make it come in in time? Sure can. So Flixie and Vico have a moment here to breathe. 
But again, this all kind of stems back to that bunker fight for me, MDF, because they spent so much time that now they are scrambling to try and make up for what was lost in the mix of it. Because they did not get the surge damage that they would have hoped for. They lost a decent amount of their resources, and now they're just praying that they can come out with even more refreshes after the fact. But they've got a long ways to trek through some of that storm as well. All the while, teams like Queasy, Thomas, a little box fight of their own up against the likes of Andalex and Sato. And that really shows you the significant difference of having a strong early game start versus a slow one. When the surge turns on, it is really, really evident how far behind you can be. For Queasy and Thomas HD, they're kind of on that line as well. They survived the first hurdle, but this next one that they know is looming nearby, they will have to stomp past. Andalix and Sato here have had a very difficult day one up against Acorn and Cold, only surviving the drop three of the six times so far, this being one of them. And now they're met with this almost brick wall, this force that is Queasy and Thomas HD. Meanwhile, Quanti ultimately does end up falling here, but not before claiming Vico and Ern some points. And sure, there might be a chance for the reboot ban play to, to come into effect, but it's likely still gonna leave Flixie and Vico sitting just underneath that storm damage threshold, if not even more so piling up against them. All the while, Peterbot continuing to claim as many eliminations as possible throughout the course of the day. These guys have been leading the charge here. Peterbot goes for another one. Oh it just God. doesn't seem like Andalex was prepared in the slightest. <laughs> I, can see, I can just hear the reaction through the headphones of what's going on here in the arena. Clearly the crowd is starting to rally with Peterbot now. Just take a look at that. And the first emote of the day as well. So confident we surging <laughs> right, that we've seen. Flixie trying to stock up as best he can. In the Grand Rail Station, but a couple of med kits still might not be enough to deal with this two-tick zone. He's doing everything he can to make his way across. Bolts in a similar situation, but in fact, there's actually Benno and Clicks on the receiving end, and they're the ones under the most duress here. Benno, he's got a little bit of shield, but underneath that damage threshold, their final lobby of the day is not gonna pan out the way they were hoping. Ninth place team in trouble. Kind of crazy, Clicks and Vino fall. Bryson Bolts jump up above them and they were neck and neck on the leaderboards on the standing. So a very, very critical set of eliminations for Bryson Bolts. And now Vino and Clicks are set back home, basically having to think about today and figuring out how to patch up their gameplay to close out in top 10 performance for tomorrow. But Bolts and Bryce heating up in the back half of the day here. They almost had that victory royale last game, dropping the ball there. Which again, to me, I didn't expect it. I really thought Bryson Bolts had that in the bag, had it secured, but Boyo was just incredible with the angle finding. Hold up. Acorn and Cold now, fine. Here, Austin Shiri. They've almost fouled each other from the south side of the zone somehow, swinging all the way here to the north side. At the same time though, they need to find some closure on some of these box fights. Spinks, Dukes, just all couple boxes away. Thought they were a little bit closer. It's actually going to be Batman, Puga, and Rapid who are directly next to them. See you in a caddy, though. They don't waste any time. They immediately aggress into Rapid's box. They're going to find one elimination there already. Batman, Puga struggling with the surge as well. Trying to do what he can to play for the med kit, but he won't get the chance taken down by the last surge tick. The, the Elim credit is going to go to Bolts, given that he did the last bit of damage there, but... In the end, now there's a lot to worry about here. Siyun and Karu obviously looking to fight back because they need a little bit of damage as well. Kato's gonna fall there. Siyun's gonna fall as well. This is to the hands now of Dukes and Sphinx. Where did they come from? Dukes showing up here to jump into the fight out of nowhere. It's incredible how quickly they were able to close the gap between themselves. They overheard the box fight commotion and they knew that's their prime opportunity to strike. Bolts as well. Finding Felixie, the dominoes effect. They started off so strong here with the forecast availability as well, and yet find themselves 
eliminated way outside of where they'd hope to be. And Thomas and Queasy, this could be a huge moment. I'd say everybody inside of the top five, even we're looking at Trulex and Chicho, Cold and Acorn. But again, all eyes on the Queasy and Thomas HD currently. They've been doing a fantastic job skirting their way through these scenes. All I can think about is that Peter Bot and Boy are starting to run away now, having a chance here to really take the lead on the scoreboard. Second place is down and out. Queasy and Thomas HD have to stay in the running now to keep this one close. Meanwhile, look who's running their way on up. Sphinx and Dukes from the back of the line. Starting to skip and hop their way to the front here somehow. Bolt still getting active. Nicely done. Finds Agu. A big elimination for him there. Armored Wall comes out to protect his flank there. The problem though is that Bolt has likely been recognized as a solo. That reveal medallion definitely in range for Peter Bot and Pollo, and they're the ones that were shooting from behind alongside Cooper and Kanata. Bolt, he was already running low on his material count, even transitioning to this point, and now his final 10 builds, hoping that he can scramble into something, anything, finds a couple more just laying on the ground, but he's been marked yet again. The pressure just continues to bubble in to his builds. That's the best part about it, is he just keeps getting marked every time he finds a new spot. That's so depressing. And everyone's like, oh, a solo. It's Bolts just trying to work his way through. Back to the armor walls he gets, though. Very nice here, and it's obviously Peter Bot and Boyo. Like, they are just almost toying with him at this point. <laughs> They could have pushed at any given time if they wanted. Look at the duality of the loot that they are functioning with. Queasy as well. He's actually got no builds. No builds. Queasy is just running it at this point. These walls might not even belong to him. Thomas HD in a similar position. Trying to climb up over. See if he can find any kind of elimination. At this point, a refresh is the only option. Queasy found one. Look, he picks up the Elim, gets a little bit of maps there. Splits it with his teammate, but the shots are coming in from the front side now. Has to burn what little bit that he picked up just to stay alive right now. And they are nearing the top 15, the next threshold there. Down he goes all up to Thomas HD now to keep the dream alive, to earn as many points as possible here. But what is humanly possible when you barely have anything to work with? He can just break into the top 10. I think Queasy and Thomas HD be very happy with the closure on their day one performance. Even more so still though, Thomas HD, he keeps looking every direction, every second. It's so difficult to maintain this level of composure. But even as a solo, Thomas HD might be able to make some magic happen. Up above though, the scanner is still coming out for Peter Bot and Folio. They have all the information in the world. Top 15 now, 28 below. Down body there. Those could be maps, but no, he needs more than that. He needs to drop teams for placement at the very least, if nothing else. Wow. Honey falls there. That'll be full credits, I think, for him. But even if it's maps there, some builds too. Gets up on the second layer. Shots come in from everywhere. Gets a couple more placement points, and it's something. But now look at this, Kanata Cooper in the end game, Trulex and Chicho once again here, alive and healthy. Even more importantly still, they're applying a little bit of pressure here onto Pollo and Peterbot. They are actually forced to just try and punch their way through the mid ground. You can tell Pollo, Peterbot, they want to maybe take a jab at the height, but Azures and Rise currently in full control and continuing to ramp upwards. A couple of armored walls expended as well, just to ensure that it's not going to be easy for them to get chopped anytime soon. They've also got the Blueberry Fizz as that emergency exit plan, but Boyo, Peterbot, across the way, spotting out Kanata and Cooper. The Reveal Medallion just doing so much as far as helping them to establish exactly which teams, which players they want to aggress. They are strategically choosing who to target, given that they have all the information that they need. Meanwhile, Gears and Shari are saying, oh, we have a chance to win if we can get out high ground. And they look up. Peterbot spots out Kanata inside the zone. Gets a little bit of damage. Figures the zone will do the rest. Now Focus comes in on the low ground. And it's so smart for them to be down here. They're just earning so many points now that they are jumping towards the 400-point threshold here. 
just in the eliminations alone. They've got seven between the two of them. Gears as a solo, bound to be marked any second here if he hasn't been already. Poyo, not even gonna bother, instantly goes with the left side edit peak, gets all the credit onto that Gears elimination. And now just a raw two versus two up against the likes of Agers and Rise. Hero you know Boyo went from second to first, and now at minimal a second place. But Boyo is always the first to kick off the fight, and he does it in spectacular fashion. Now Peter Boss steps up to the plate. Agers is hurt. One edit, it's all it's gonna take here to put him down. But Overwall comes through to get his teammate the full reset here. He says, "Hey, let's not rush it." And then they jump down. Focusing up the high ground here shortly. Give it a moment now. Peter Bon Boyo side by side here. Rise and Azer starting to fill it up. Pressure coming in from the low ground. They're running out of materials. Armor walls are done. They're depleted. Still decent amount of space for Peter Bot and Boyo to work with. Keep in mind, wow. Boyo also still has those four armored walls, but as far as the health bar is concerned, Peterbot, Poyo, they are fully in the driver's seat. But that doesn't mean that Rising Agers couldn't turn this one in their favor. They also need a massive game here to finish strong in the leaderboard. Definitely, this is gonna be a significant moment now. How do you close out day number one? Second and first, very impactful differences here. Peterbot and Poyo start to swing their way up. They get the angle that they're looking for. Poyo, once again, doesn't quite find it. Peterbot's hurt though. It's a low ground attack. Boyo by himself here, but the trade from Peterbot up top, he has done what he needed to. And Boyo takes down Azers and clutches out the win from the low ground with back-to-back -back dunks. Boyo said it himself. I don't need to worry when I've got Peterbot next to me and Peterbot can say the same fashion as long as he's got his duo, Boyo. These two can always try to reestablish control and they took this last game by force. One more time, back to back, Victory Royales, give it up for Peter Bonapoyo! <laughs> Fellas, I seem to chat to you a lot on this day one of this competition, and I'm loving it because what we're seeing out there, doesn't matter if it's high ground, low ground, mid, you guys are in control, Poyo. Walk us through the last part of that game there. I mean, it just seemed that, you know, even though you were on the low, you managed to control things perfectly. Yeah, I mean, it was like last game too. We waited for old builds and then we went up. We were able to like crack them. Peter got a kill and then the other one just did. I mean, we, we, we celebrate, like this, people are really screaming your name over that. Someone literally shouted Peter, the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, and rightly so, by the way. Um, obviously, Poyo as well. Let's get the credit where it's due. A team like Poyo, what's it been like competing in this year, in this competition? Um, give him his props. How great is this as a, as a duo teammate? I mean, he's the best teammate possible. I mean, he gets eliminations. He's like a good like IGL when I need it. You know, like we're kind of like, we both make calls and, uh, you know, like we're like the best team. We're looking ahead to tomorrow now. Today, I mean, you guys have cemented yourselves top of that leaderboard. It is looking mighty fine indeed. Uh, what do you do tonight? How do you guys kind of like regroup ahead of tomorrow? I mean, do you need to regroup at this point? Are you just gonna play it exactly the same way? Boy, how do, how do things happen tonight? What happens tomorrow? Um, there's always room for improvement. We're gonna look like games tonight and then see what we can do tomorrow. And Peter Bot, you are steps away. Tomorrow, someone's gonna lift that trophy. How did... How do you think it's going to be, you guys? How close do you think it's going to come to it? That'll be us. It won't be close. I mean, we're ahead by a lot. And tomorrow we're going to come out um, winning. Fort Worth, do you think Peter Bon Poyo could go all the way? 